Good evening, you rascals. Thanks for checking out the channel. Tobin here with you. Just got done watching uh, episode six of Hard Knocks. I want to talk. You want to talk about rascals? This Tua, he he's a Christmas rascal. This dude loved Christmas. This has been this has been portrayed now in like the last three Hard Knocks. How much this dude enjoys the holidays? But this man was was so giddy for his quarterback room to get their gifts. With uh, Skylar Thompson and Mike White, uh, Daryl Bevel, and the other guy—I don't remember his name—the uh, assistant QB coach. He was very excited. Like every time, he just kept. Oh, why don't we open it now? He wants to see. He wants a little now. I give a little pokes the head in there. He just wants some Christmas cheer, and that was a goosey scene. We'll get to that in just a bit. But he, uh, the the episode starts off with a delight. Christian Wilkins bought everybody Krispy Kremes which Mike McDaniel was surprised by because he bought it with his own money and under the uh, description of Mike McDaniel is surprising coming from the cheapest man on the f***ing planet. So Christian Wilkins is uh, donating the Krispy Kremes. Always, my, always, my fondest memory of Krispy Kreme was always the Florida Marlins. Uh, I want to say it was like, I don't remember if it was the championship year, but I know for sure 04, 05 they did this because I had season tickets. And it was always dozen hits, dozen donuts. And it was just, it was always a delight. We want donuts. <laughs> and whenever that happened, and Marlins had a good offense back then. You know, they had Mikey Lowell and Carlos Delgado for a little bit there. Derek Lee in the championship year. Uh, Alex Gonzalez, Luis Castillo, Miggy, of course. So there'd be times you'd be getting some some free Krispy Kreme. The only one I remember though was I think in North Miami that was buying old Toys R Us, uh, and that was the uh, the Krispy Kreme that we would always hit up with your ticket stub. Had ticket stub back in the day. You'd get yourself a Krispy Kreme. What a delight that was! But anyway, uh, people also said that uh, they grumbled. They thought that Liam Eikenberg is giving would give Christian Wilkins a run for his money for cheapest dolphin, but. I know Christian Wilkins has famously talked about how frugal he is in the past. So very nice of him to bring the uh, the donuts and and have all that. So you know, Mike McDaniel gives his typical speech. You know, every you know every you know we 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 turned the Titans' loss into something that mattered. All the focus in the Jets. He did actually do the thing which he told the media, which was give everybody permission to tell the media to f off when talking about playoff seating, and um, you know. That that was uh, that was kind of his go to tone setter for the week, and then there was a big thing on presents. Toa, uh, I mean, he's humming silver bells. He's so excited to give away presents, and you know they have uh, <laughs> you know they, then they showed Tyreek giving away scooters. That happened a couple weeks back, but that was kind of cool to see him give those away. It was funny. Braxton Berrios went to Tyreek Hill at one point, and he's like, "Hey, do you have me for Secret Santa?" And Tyreek Hill goes. He goes, it wouldn't be a f***ing secret if I had you for Secret Santa, then would it? Like, I can't tell you, which is a solid boxing from the Cheetah. Not only is he faster than Enderby Man Alive, but he also apparently fastest boxing to Braxton Berrios. He wasn't, uh, he was not, uh, he was not prepared for that one. The whole point of Secret Santa is to shh, keep it a secret. Tua, I think he would stink at Secret Santa. He seems like he just wants to give gifts to everybody. Um, the show Cheetah, he's struggling a little bit. And he's uh, and he's going through the ankle injury, and you know that that was kind of cool to see to see how he's battling through that type of stuff. Then we get the big celebration plan for the week. Now Tua, who loves Christmas, he tried to go very uh, very very uh, spiritual. He's like, why don't we go three kings, and one of us has the baby. And then you guys are the kings and bring it. And you can just tell that everybody hates this idea. You know, they love to, or they don't want to tell them they hate the idea. So they just go, let's put that in the maybe pile. It's in the pot, Tua. It's in the pot. And then, all right, thanks, guys. And then they come up with this genius idea, which we didn't really get the reveal on how they were going to execute it till the end because we never got it in the game. But they were going to be Christmas carolers and that they were going to set themselves up. Two receivers were going to be doors. Uh, somebody was going to answer the door. And then you'd have a bunch of other people on offense doing, da, 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 you know, like whatever. So great celebration. Very unfortunate we never got to it. Um, they do a feature on the equipment manager, Goosey's Galore. Guy was a Dolphins fan. He now runs all the Dolphins equipment. That seemed really cool. Um, 
then they return. They do a bunch of features on Guy's Christmas and the charity work that they're doing, Armstead and Xavier Howard, Jerome Baker. But the cool one was Raheem Mostert. He went back to his hometown with his brother and gave a lot of stuff there for the uh, community center. So that was pretty awesome to see. They um, go to the Dolphins, prep of the Cowboys, and talk about what a menace Micah Parsons is. And Tyree Kill describes him as, well, he's basically like me if I was a defensive end. And everybody's like, yes, Cheetah, that's exactly right. He's the best, you're the best, we get it, you're the best, you're the Cheetah. And so, and those two, of course, you know, John back and forth. We get a little something from Micah Parsons, who, by the way, you know, I, I got a couple things on his little closing that we got uh, with him after this. So that was cool. And then we get a look at the game week prep of this after they're prepping for the Cowboys. And Mike McDaniel has a method to his madness, which is he is going to go out there and he's going to talk to all the other units from the other units to rile everybody up. So he'll be talking over to the cornerbacks about the wide receivers. He'll be talking and uh, over to the offensive line from the defensive line, you know, just because he says, we're competing today. He's like, we're competing today. You know, he's just very giddy. He's very excited about it. So that was really, uh, that was fun. Uh, you got a little Cater Kohu feature on his family, his journey over from the Ivory Coast. A lot of the father did not know football, but he did say when they were in Texas, he was a Cowboys fan. I'm a little torn. And the mom, mom uh, you know, Cater Kohu's mother's like, we're not torn, we're rooting for Miami, which that's a great mom. She seems, she's got her eye on the prize. Okay. She's got the, she's got the, uh, the, the feature there. And the other cool thing about that was Cater was uh, there was at one point Mike McDaniel was telling him that you're a tone setter in practice. Like you're a tone, you and David Long are my tone setters. If you don't like the the energy, it's your team to ratchet that puppy up. So that was great. The last thing that we get before we get to the game is the coup de gras, the 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 the, the grand reveal that Tua was super excited for. QB room Christmas. And Tua arrives to QB room Christmas dressed in Christmas PJs. He looks adorable. And who's there at QB room Christmas but Dan the man, Dan Marino, who now we know after a couple episodes here, they all refer to him as Uncle Dan. And Uncle Dan, he goes in there. He wants some Darius Rucker Christmas. That's his guy, you know, used to have Darius Rucker sleep on his couch. Of course, only want to be with you co-star of the music video, Dan Marino. And so he wants some of that. Tua walks in, tells Uncle Dan Merry Christmas. If you didn't get the goose, he's just, you're dead inside. And so what does Dan Marino, they give Dan Marino some very bougie wine. They didn't reveal what it was. Probably because he, uh, not an NFL sponsor, if I had to guess. And they're just like, I don't know, we don't know what that wine is. Just to say it's expensive. You know, it's probably uh, it probably crushed by some some very fancy grapes. Who knows? So Dan Marino, he returns the favor. He gets the QB room isotoners. Dan Marino brings the OG sponsor to the QB room. They all get isotoner gloves and they got them on. It was a it was a delight. But he was so ex- to, they go to Tua, and he is so excited to reveal his presence. And the presents were golf simulators, which we know Tua loves golf. Leroy has told me, he says, look, the best golfers on a team are typically the kickers, backup quarterbacks. So I assume that this is a, a give that Mike White, Skylar Thompson, Mike White's uh, South Florida kid. I'm sure he loves golf. They all seem to really dig this. They all got golf simulators to practice. And it was a, it was a great time. It was, a, it was a, it was a real delight to see that. So get to the game, Mike McDaniel, they have like a little, uh, they're, they're showing like the throwbacks, right? And get everybody fired up. And it's said in the voiceover, Mike McDaniel's like, I want this to be decided late. I want it to be decided in the fourth quarter. Okay. He wants something to be proven late. And, and so apparently the locker room hated this. He goes and he's telling one of his assistant coaches, it escapes my name, who he was talking to, but he's like, Man, told the locker room that uh, one of that fourth quarter, that's coming down the fourth quarter, that did not go over well. They did not like that. They shunned me, I believe was his words. They shunned me. And uh, Raheem Mostert actually reveals in the uh, the the post scene, he goes, 
goes, yeah, no, come down to the end. We all hated that. I don't know where, where he came up with it. We all hate that idea. But he's not Mystic Mac for nothing. I mean, he seemed to have a premonition as to how this was going to go. The other cool part about it was, before the game starts, was Mike McDaniels behind Tyreek, Xavier Howard, and Tua. And he goes, holy shit, look at our captains. Our captains are good. And then Cheetah goes, yeah, and we got Dan Marino. And Mike McDaniel, the, 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 the rascal that he is, he goes out there and he goes, yeah, f*** your records, Dan Marino. We're coming for your records. I was like, wow, I love that. I, lo- I loved all of that. So the game was fantastic. You know, the, the, the big, I think, the big takeaway from the game footage, first of all, they unfortunately did not get to the Christmas Carol celebration. So that was a bummer. They show the, uh, the injury that uh, Mostert went through where he takes the hit on the shin. They also did a feature on Kater Kohu. They showed Kater Kohu getting uh, beat by CeeDee Lamb, completely blown that assignment. But Duke Riley, to his credit, really rallied the troops. So I love that. But uh, I would say the star of this game in the mic'd up was Cheetah because Cheetah was basically like, he was fired up. He's like, Tua, he goes, money down. You come to me no matter what. And lo and behold, that's how that puppy would go, you know? And, and uh, so Dallas goes up. They go 20 to 19. Mike McDaniel, he's not sweating it. And they keep going. They get to the third and two, very dramatic. They go over to the play. And uh, Tua just tells him, we need this shit, Reek. We need this. And I'm going to get it out real quick. Boom. What do you know? Gets to him. Two to Jeff Wilson gets the fire, uh, gets the first down. Super fired up. And then uh, Jason Sanders, he lines up for the field goal. Mike McDaniel, very confident in all this. He says that he's got this shit. And then asks uh, his, uh, his get back guy, he goes, where's Mike, where's Mike McCarthy at? Where's McCarthy at, huh? And so he finds Mike McCarthy. They have some kind words. You know, McCarthy's like, I really enjoy watching your offense. McDaniel's like, you know, it was an honor sharing the field with you. Very kind. Very kind for him to say that to Mike McCarthy after kicking his ass. Tua's giving some big praise to Dak. He also gives some big praise to Micah Parsons, you know, telling me. But Micah Parsons was being a a, a bit of a baby. You know, he's like, you know, I'm just frustrated. Boo. It's like, yeah, well, you know. Maybe a little less frustrated. Maybe, you know, take your frustrations out. That's fine. Nothing wrong with being frustrated in a loss, Micah. But also, you know, maybe not talk so much, uh, you know what, in the, in the lead up to this. You know, I've cursed a lot on this, uh, in this video. So maybe not talk so much. And, uh, and we wouldn't have such an issue. Well, Micah Parsons, he was all Ooh, I'm frustrated. Too bad. Guess who's not frustrated? Tua. You want to know why? He loves Christmas, and he just kicked your ass on Christmas. Ergo, he's having the greatest Christmas ever. Um, the last part I'd just like to point out, they do a very nice uh, morning Christmas, Christmas morning scene with the Mosterts. Very goosies. His wife's talking about the journey they've been through, and she's very proud to see her husband ball out like this. But if we could go back to the locker room, this Christian Wilkins is a menace, and he is hugging everybody. First of all, he puts Jason Sanders on his shoulders. Jason Sanders did not look comfortable being on his shoulders. It was like he didn't have a choice. And and you're going to it was like Christian Wilkins was taking him through Zoo Miami and showing him the lemurs. Like like he was his child. So he was very uncomfortable. He he, he t- I think Dan Marino kind of got the message cuz like the 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 hug was a little bit held back this time around because the last time he just goes Uncle Dan and hugs him. Um but then he nearly knocks over Tom Garfinkel, and Garfinkel tries to give him the business back. Doesn't work. And then he sees Steven Ross, and then he's like, you didn't pay my extension yet. I'm going to get you. And he gives the old man a little kind of half, uh, a, a half bump into him because, you know, he's old. The old aren't very good at chest bumps. But uh, either way, Goosey's episode, still loving Hard Knocks, could could. Drink it, chop it up, snort it, smoke it. I love every piece of Hard Knocks. It's the greatest. My favorite TV show, really. I mean, outside of UK Love Island, uh, you know, the the Tommy Fury season, of course. Outside of that, this is the greatest thing that's ever hit television. 